Uh, today, we will start off with load balancing Citrix storefront servers on Netscaler that I built in the previous video. Uh, if you if you have a look, uh, uh, this is the this is the same lab that we've been working on, and I'm just going to jump on the Zen server host of mine. And if you recollect from the last uh, last blog of mine, uh, he built uh, two storefront servers uh, on the existing Windows Server uh, 2019. Uh, so I'm just going to log on to CVAD SF01, which was the server that we built, and I'll open up Citrix storefront. So we got we got one store created, and uh, uh, th that's the same store that will be used internally and externally both. The name of the store is called Store uh, when we normally created it. So today, what we are going to be doing is we'll be uh, load balancing uh, the store URLs on on my existing Netscaler. So I'm just going to log on to the Netscalers. Uh, so that's the NSIP of my Netscaler, which is in pair. And I'm running version 13.1. So the first thing that we're going to do is I've already imported a couple of things on the Netscalers. I've already got that same SSL certificate the wildcard SSL cert that we got installed on the storefront server that's been imported and installed on the existing Netscaler. So that's the only prerequisite step which I completed uh, uh, on this specific video. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we need to we need to go to traffic management, and firstly we will um, create the service. We'll add the existing two storefront servers under the server list. Uh, so the name of the servers was CVAD SF01. And you can always put some comments in so that you know. That is for, and we'll click on create. So that's the first server that's added. Uh, let's go back again and create another server. So I just change that to two and the IP for that and click on create. So as you can see, we have got two uh, server objects that's already been created now in the, uh, in the console. Uh, next step is normally to create the monitors uh, for storefront servers that we are trying to uh, monitor. So under monitor, I'll go and click on add and I'll create a storefront monitor. Uh, in type, uh, you should normally have a pre-populated uh, monitor called storefront. Uh, we are going to be using that and click select. And we need to normally just keep in the store name, which is store and we'll, we'll make sure that we take the secure because I want to make sure that I'm monitoring 443 because uh, it's working on HTTPS and I'll click create. So as you can see, the monitor is now created. Uh, the next step is to create the service groups uh, for uh, that specific uh, uh, storefront server. So I'll go ahead and create a service group. Uh, I'll call it SVC underscore storefront. A uh, protocol would normally be SSL, and we're doing okay. Uh, in the server groups, uh, we select uh, we select server base, and then we select the two servers that we just recently added. So we'll tick them both and click select. Uh, I need to normally monitor four four three, so I'll put four four three in the port, and I'll click create. You can see that both of the servers have been created in the server groups. I'll click OK on that. The next step is we need to bind the monitors that we created. So I'm going to click on monitor and we are going to select monitors and we're going to select the one that we just created earlier, which is storefront. And I'll click on select and I'm going to bind it down there.
that looks all good and I'm just going to click on done There's one more setting that needs to normally be set on it as well. So if we click on, if we edit the settings up here, we need to enable the client IP e header and we need to select X forwarded for on that and click on OK and click on done. So you can see the service group is now created. The next step is creating the virtual server uh, for storefront. So I click on virtual server, I click on add. I'll call it vServer Storefront. The protocol would normally be SSL, which is 443. I already uh, know what the IP is for this Storefront load balancer of mine, so I'll just put that in. And I'll do an OK. Uh, the next step is I'll be uh, selecting the service group binding. Uh, I will normally bind the, the service group that we created, which is SVC underscore storefront and click on select and I'll bind it. I'll click on continue. Uh, I will use the same so certificate that has been installed on both of my storefront server as well, which I've already imported. So I'll click on server certificate and I will search the certificate and select it and bind it. Click on continue. Uh, the next one is the method. Uh, I'll make sure that, yeah, the load balancing method that we select is least connection and the backup method is round robin. I do an OK to that. Uh, then I click on persistent. I'll make sure that I'm using uh, source IP uh, to normally route all of the con connections from the same user to the same service. And I'll click OK to that. And once that's done, I'll just click on done. And you can see that uh, the probes are up. So it's up and running. Uh, and I'll go ahead and save the config on the Netscalers. Now, just to, just to double check and make sure that the monitors are up and running, we can click on the service group. And you can normally also check, uh, go inside the service group and click on show members. and you can see the service state is up for both of these storefront server. Now is the step uh, where we need to make sure that uh, this URL, the base URL is, uh, we are able to get to this URL. Now there is one more, there's one more prerequisite which I've already configured is I've already created a DNS entry for storefront.ubitech.co.nz. Uh, so if I if I ping that URL, you you should be able to ping it and I should be able to reach it. And hopefully it should resolve to the same IP that we created, which is the load balancer IP, which is 168.1.145. Uh, so I'm going to close that. And let's try and reach the URL and see if you're able to log in. Uh, on the storefront server, I'll open up Edge. And you can see that I've reached the storefront server. So I've enabled the, the latest and the greatest UI experience of Citrix Cloud on storefront. Uh, and I'll show you guys where we can enable that or disable it if, if this is not needed. So I'll just click on that and I'll say already this. I'll put in my username password. I won't be able to enumerate any apps or desktop at this point as we still need to finish off with our Citrix delivery controller or installation and configuration. But as you can see, uh, uh, Snowfront is doing its job. It's authenticating and it's enumerated. It's not enumerated. It's just logged me in uh, with the credentials. Uh, but if, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to log out here and 
go back to the storefront console and I'll just show you these settings. So within the storefront console, or if you have a look at manage receiver for websites and click on configure, there's a new option called under the UI experience called next generation experience. And that's the reason why uh, I'm getting the new look and feel of Citrix Cloud in here. If I didn't want it to normally have the cloud experience, I could still use the unified experience by clicking the unified experience and going back to the same aim, uh, you know, web page that we normally used to normally are able to see that uh, when, uh, when we're normally using the LTSR version. But I prefer to normally use the uh, new generation experience. It's pretty, uh, trendy and it looks pretty much exactly the same as the cloud uh that's that's it uh from me in this series uh in this next in the next series we will start off with installation and configuration of citrix delivery controller in high ability uh thank you everyone for watching this video hasta la vista from citrix sage don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to my channel thank you